Here's a flash revision guide on cell differentiation and specialization, including the process of a cell becoming specialized and examples of specialized plant and animal cells. Let's get into it. So let's start off with cell differentiation. Organisms like animals and plants aren't made up of the same type of cell. They have cells of different types in different parts of the body which are specialized for the function of that body part. For example, the cells in the muscles are adapted to help the muscles carry out its function which is to contract. And the ones in the brain are designed to help the brain with one of its functions which is to carry messages. We call these specialized cells because they're adapted for their particular function. This specialization of cells for specific roles is essential for tissues, organs and even whole organisms to work properly. Cells that are unspecialized are like a blank slate. They can turn into any other type of cell by a process known as differentiation. This is defined as the process by which a cell changes to become specialized for a specific function. This process involves the cell developing different numbers of subcellular structures such as mitochondria and ribosomes and sometimes even changing its shape so that they can carry out their specific jobs better as a specialized cell. In most animal cells, differentiation really only happens at an early stage in their lives when the organism is very young. So most cells become specialized by the time the animal is an infant. And once they become specialized, they lose the ability to differentiate so they won't be able to do it again. By the time the animal is mature, differentiation mainly takes place for repair and replacement only. So that's basically when the animal is growing or when they're healing from an injury. On the other hand, plant cells never lose their ability to differentiate and can do so throughout their entire lives, from when they're young seedlings to when they're fully grown. So now let's look at some examples of specialized cells and how they're adapted to perform their particular functions. Let's start off with some animal cells which are specialized. First, we have sperm cells which have a job of delivering genetic material to an egg for fertilization. They have a tail to help them swim to the egg and a streamlined head shape to make their movement more efficient. They also have more mitochondria than normal cells for energy production so that they can make the journey to the egg cell. The sperm head contains enzymes that digest through the cell membrane of the egg cell to help them fertilize the egg. So in order for this to work, the sperm cell only has half the amount of genetic material compared to normal body cells. This is because they combine with the egg cell which also contains half the genetic material from the mother to form a new cell with a complete set of genetic material for a new organism. The next type of specialized cell we have are nerve cells, which are also called neurons. These are found all over the body and transfer messages in the form of electrical impulses. They have long extensions called axons which allow them to carry these electrical impulses and these axons are surrounded by a myelin sheath which insulates them to make the electrical signals faster. They also have branching structures called dendrites which extend from the cell's body and increase the surface area. These allow them to connect with other neurons and receive and transmit electrical signals from one neuron to another. Muscle cells are specialized cells which are designed to make the muscles contract and relax, allowing the animal to move. They contain a large number of mitochondria which releases energy for contraction. They also have specialized protein fibers which can slide past each other and allow the muscle to change length, allowing it to contract and relax. So now let's look at some plant cells which are specialized. Plants have roots that grow underground to absorb water and minerals from the soil. These roots are made out of specialized cells known as root hair cells. They have elongated hair-like structures that stick out in order to increase their surface area. This makes the absorption more efficient. They also do not have any chloroplasts in them because their job doesn't involve photosynthesis. They're found underground so they never receive sunlight, therefore they have no need for chloroplasts. Xylem cells are another type of specialized plant cell which make up the xylem which is a long tube that goes through the plant and that's adapted to transport water and minerals from the roots to the rest of the plant. They have thick walls which are made stronger with a substance known as lignin. This helps to provide support for the xylem. The cells in the xylem are also dead, meaning they don't contain any cytoplasm or other subcellular structures and they don't have any end walls. This is because they can join together to form a continuous tube to transport the water and minerals more effectively. 
Phloem cells form the phloem tube, which is similar to the xylem, but is responsible for transporting sugars and nutrients throughout the plant. These cells are organized in tube-like structures, but they're made up of living cells and they do have end walls. These end walls are made up of sieve-like plates with tiny holes in them. This allows them to have more control in the movement of different substances as the process needs energy. This results in a more efficient transport and distribution of nutrients around the plant. And that's it for that topic guys. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.